Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Food Truck Inspired. I'm Beth, and I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth to tell us about the recipes. So, Elizabeth, tell us about your recipe. Okay, so I was thinking about this one, and I was like, what? I was thinking about food trucks that I go to, and um, uh, I'm not going to name them, but there's a few in Ann Arbor that I really like. Um, but some of them I go to because they make like complicated stuff that I don't want to make at home. There's also a couple up North that I go to, but anyway, one of the things that I really like to get at food trucks is a breakfast burrito. Um, and so I decided to make that. And I often get that from the food truck outside, um, Zingerman's Roadhouse. There's the little Airstream and I, there's a drive-through situation. So I often go there. Um, but I've gotten breakfast burritos from a number of food trucks in my life. And so that's what I went for. And I found, um, this recipe from, let me pull it up once upon a chef. It was very easy. And the thing that I liked is the recipe called for, it makes four, but I'm often just cooking breakfast for myself. So it was very easy to scale down. So I liked that. Um, so basically the first thing you do is you make a avocado tomato salsa. So you take an avocado that's diced, um, half cup of tomatoes, small minced shallot, minced clove of garlic, minced jalapeno pepper, juice of one lime, some salt, and a quarter cup of fresh cilantro. And you just mix that all together. Super delicious. Again, I was just making it for myself. So I just did like a little bit less of everything. Um, then you um, take a couple eggs and whisk them together in a bowl with some smoked paprika and set that aside. And then you have, have some sausage that you're going to cook up. Um, and so this was nice. It called for X amount of sausage. But what I did is I just bought um, sausage, like the sausage, sausage patties that came in a package of eight. And I just used two. And then I like wrapped up the package. So I thought that worked out really well. Um, so you cook up the sausage, you add the eggs in, um, and you then you spread out your burrito size tortilla, put some salsa on, put the sausage egg mixture on top of that, and then top it with some shredded Monterey Jack. You bundle it up and you put it back in the little pan to kind of like toast. I have a picture of it in the pan here, just getting browned. And then um, you, you know, kind of flip it around so it gets browned a little bit. And then that's it. And um, I have a picture of it also cut in half on my plate and it was very delicious. Um, of course, I always made the mistake that I always make, which is overstuffing it. So I had a little bit of trouble like getting it like back together, but um, it was really, really good. And the salsa was so fresh and such a nice, like kind of brightened it up because I think otherwise it would have been a little heavy. It was very filling, um, definitely like a good hearty breakfast or, or lunch. Um, I actually like ate half of it and then wrapped it up and then ate the other half the next day just because it was pretty filling. Um, and it was really great. And it would totally be something you could make and then like put in foil and like, you know, take to work or put, put in the fridge to eat the next day or whatever. And um, I really liked it. And I'm definitely gonna keep this in mind because it was so easy and, uh, and good. Sounds great. It sounds super versatile. I love your tips about scaling it down for one person, especially with the sausage. That sounds a lot easier than like taking a tube and trying to navigate how much you need. So that's awesome. It sounds so good. I very rarely make myself a breakfast burrito, but when I do, I never regret it. So yeah, I'm going to try this. And I also appreciate the tip about Zingerman's when you uh, don't have time necessarily to make this because I've never been to their food truck and it's just down the street from me. So I will definitely have to check it out. Sounds great.
Yeah, I, I, that's not something I make either. Um, but it sounds really good. And yeah, and I was just, I'm tasked with bringing uh, something for breakfast with a group of friends. So I, but I don't know, that seems a little labor intensive, but anyway, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah, it was good. And um, yeah, you know, it, it'd be fun to serve, if, especially if you had like a guest over or something like that, because it's, it was good. So um, Katie, tell us about your food truck inspiration. All right. So the recipe that I am sharing today is for chicken pakora with cucumber reda and cilantro mint chutney. So pakora is a traditional Indian street food. It's a fritter that's usually, I think, and Google thinks so too, made with veggies. So I've encountered a lot of veggie pakora in my time at food trucks. Um, usually it's potatoes and onion or potatoes or onion. That's like the most common that I've seen. Uh, but I had never seen chicken pakora or a recipe for chicken pakora. So when I saw this, I was like, sure, let's try that. Like, that sounds interesting. So um, so this one has two sauces with it. You make you can make both of these a day or two ahead of time, which is what I did. That was really nice to be able to just like make the sauces ahead of time and then not have to worry about that when I was making the chicken. So the first sauce is a cucumber reda, very simple cucumber yogurt sauce. You just grate your cucumber, strain the, get the water out of it, mix it with yogurt, salt, mint leaves, some ground cumin, and then you top it with paprika. It's tasty, fresh, and good. And then the second sauce is one that I hadn't made before, and that's a cilantro mint chutney. So you take uh, two cups of cilantro leaves and stems, which I thought was really neat that you use the stems too, because a lot of recipes that I um, have made don't use the stems. And then a cup of mint leaves, some garlic cloves, a couple jalapeno peppers, uh, some lemon juice, salt, a little bit of sugar, ground cumin, and some water to um, to thin it out if you need to. And you just put everything in the food processor and that's your that's your chutney. So that was um, really easy and nice to make. And then you make your chicken pakora. So um, you start with a boneless, skinless chicken breast or thighs chopped up um, into cubes. And then you take your Chicken cubes, put them in a bowl with some minced ginger, minced garlic, chili powder, chopped masala, and salt, and toss that all up to mix, and you want to let that sit for about 15-20 minutes. Then you combine, then you make your batter. And one of the things that I really have always loved about pakora is that it's made with chickpea flour. So um, it's naturally gluten-free and it I think tastes really good with the chickpea flour on it. So uh, you take your chickpea flour, which is, by the way, is also called graham flour or bison, which I don't know if I'm pronouncing either of those correctly, actually, but uh, it's got a couple different names. Um, so you combine your flour, cornstarch, and water and just whisk that well until it's combined. And then you just toss your chicken cubes that have been... Um, all spiced and marinating into the pakora batter. Stir that all together and make sure everything gets like really well coated. Then you let that stand for another 15 or 20 minutes. You're gonna heat up your oil because these are fried. Um, I use peanut oil to fry. I find that it doesn't smell up the house so much. Um, it's just a really nice frying oil. Then you get that really hot. And once it's hot enough so that when you drop in a piece of chicken, it sizzles, it's ready, and you do this in batches. So you don't want to overcrowd your oil. So just, um, you know, like a handful of these chicken pieces at a time. They cook about six to nine minutes a piece, and you want to turn them a little bit as they're cooking. And then once they're nice and, uh, what does it say, Dark golden brown is um, when you pull them out and put them on a paper uh, towel lined plate and just continue cooking. Uh, when everything's done, you serve them with your sauces. I've got a picture. I served it on like a nice 
big platter because it made a ton of chicken. And then you can garnish it with green chilies, chopped cilantro, curry leaves, you know, whatever you've got to make it, get a, give it a little green, make it look pretty. And this was tasty. I really enjoyed it. It was a nice spin on both like the pecora that I'm used to and also just fried chicken. So I thought it was a really neat recipe and I would make this for a party. Like it made a ton of chicken and I think people would go to town on it. I think it would be a nice recipe for that. Well, kudos to you for frying things. That's always daunting, but it sounds really good. I, I, so I'm not familiar with pakora at all. This is, this was all news and interesting to me. Um, but like, so is it mainly the chicken gets kind of coated in the chickpea flour and cornstarch just a little bit? And is like, how much of a like crust is actually on it? That's what I'm trying to visualize. Sure. It's not like a, it's not a super thick crust. I would say it's like a thinner sort of batter on there. Like it's definitely gives you that like fried chicken sort of coating, but it's okay. not a super thick one. Okay. Yum. That sounds great. And then is it, is there a, something you put it on or you just like, just, just dip it and is it a main dish or side? Or yeah, it's a main okay. dish. Um, okay. if it, especially with chicken, it is. But I mean, <laughs> I was about to say, but not really with veggies. But I've definitely eaten a whole thing of veggie pakora for my main dish. So yeah, oh. it is. Okay. But I think a lot of times it's considered like if you get pakora from a restaurant or a truck, it's considered like an appetizer usually. Okay, yum. Um, cool. but around here there is uh. I don't know the name of it, but there's an Indian food truck that's been frequently, frequently frequenting homes quite a bit. I think they okay. have Pakora there, but also Everest Sherpa, oh, which is a restaurant in town and a new restaurant that I have not tried yet just down the street on Jackson Road called Base Camp. They also have oh, yeah. Pakora. So there are a couple places in town that you can get it. Cool. Okay. Good to yeah. know. Very All right. Cool. Tell us well, about gosh, your truck. Recipe. I will tell you, and it's what I made was not nearly as complicated as either of you. But uh, well, you probably know I have my uh, one of my favorite places to eat in town is Ricewood. Started out as a food truck. Um, Ricewood is a, considers himself a barbecue joint, and the but the what's unique, and I I didn't do the specific what i'm sharing today is the finadeni sauce now i'm going to show you how it's spelled because i've been saying it wrong for years uh, but i talked to frank Fajaran, who's the chef and owner of ricewood who they're family friends that go we go back a long ways and um so he told me how to pronounce it and also that it's strictly for rice it's um, whereas in our house, we thought we were making finadine sauce and we always would put cucumbers in it because that's how we thought it came. But no, it's not cucumber. So what it is, is just doctored up soy sauce. It's a, and I found the recipe on food.com. But if you just look up finadine, finadeni, um, there's a few other um, uh sites that have it so it it hails from guam and it's kind of cool that it, this is the beginning or we're in may so it's asian american and pacific islander heritage month uh so and frank has some roots in guam and when you read articles about the finadeni it's like anyone that's been stationed in guam or certainly people that are from guam very familiar everyone has finadeni on their table Everyone puts their own spin on it, but um, the the key things are soy sauce, which I used half a cup of soy sauce, quarter cup. Now they say vinegar, or lemon juice, but lots of folks chimed in about just lemon juice. And knowing me, I'm a lemon person, so quarter, uh, half a cup of soy sauce, quarter cup of lemon juice, two green onions, and uh, three to five minced hot peppers uh, on Guam and in the Pacific it, that area. Uh, they use boonie peppers. 
Um, we don't have them here. Uh, I used a couple of jalapenos. Frank says that they use habanero at um, Ricewood. And it also includes some tomatoes, uh, but it's it's not, it just so happens that they serve spiced cucumbers. That's just an extra thing. So I made rice, I made the finadeni. I only made a little bit and I did not put tomatoes in it. Um, and as it turned out though, we had some leftover pot roast. So that was really, really good with my rice, a little bit of pot roast. It really gave it that flavor and for uh, the rice wood flavor, which for people that don't know, it's a, it's a barbecue, but they use this finadeni sauce and it's different than most barbecue situations. Um, so if you want anything to taste, have that rice wood little flavor, that's what you do. You make the finadeni sauce and it's, it really was good with the pot roast. That's so cool, Beth. I, so I almost made a ricewood inspired bowl for this because I love ricewood too, but you know, I'm not a big like meat. I don't do a lot of meat. And I was kind of just like, I, I don't want to try to barbecue. And like, I didn't, so I just didn't. And I went my breakfast breeder out, but that's so cool because I can taste exactly what you're talking about. It is that really unique flavor that makes yeah. Their bowl, I get their rice bowls just so good. So yeah. that's awesome that you were Yeah, it, I was so pleased. It was really just like, oh, hey, we have this pot roast. And so uh, even because it had cooked with potatoes and carrots, but then it just totally changed the flavor profile. And it was, it was really good. So awesome. um, it's, it's definitely a great thing to have in your back pocket for just for your leftovers. You can put it on tofu. Um, anything yeah it sounds great i love that you were able to go like basically right to the source too and talk to frank about how they make it that's uh that's very unique and cool so yeah sharing that that's awesome thank you yeah i i will tell him when we when we air the yeah you'll have to so um yeah well it was fun and super simple so uh I will take us out by saying thank you for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadale.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we will be looking at uh, cruciferous vegetables. We look forward to seeing what you're, you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe Share, Recipe Share. Share a little recipe with recipe share